Good evening. I greet you this evening in the precious name of Jesus. I thank God for this wonderful opportunity to share the word of God and I pray that you all will be blessed by the time I'm finished tonight. There's a saying that goes, don't be so heavenly minded that you have no earthly good. Today my exhortation is going to change that to, to be so heavenly minded that you are of tremendous earthly good. My reading today is taken from the book of Colossians, chapter 3, from verses 1 to 4, and it reads as follows. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things above, not on the things on the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Paul is encouraging us to do things which are above. Verse 2 says, set your mind on things above. Now the word set in this context means to exercise or to rein in. Now many of us know how hard it is for us to make up our minds to exercise. For some of you it may be easy, but for some of us it's a hard thing. And so we have to determine in our minds that we want to get down and we want to do it and then only do we do it. We are exhorted in the scripture to stretch our minds. That means to take our, our where we are in, right now in our situations, when we look at where we are right now, to see it as God sees it. When we look around the world right now, there's sickness, there's death, there's fear, there's despair, there's hopelessness. People have lost their joy and hope there's sin and there's corruption all around us. And it is so easy for us to be consumed by what is going on. And when we talk to people and when we see people, we see how consumed they are by what is happening right now on the earth. But the word of God encourages us. It gives us strength. And Paul in verse 3 of Colossians uh, chapter 3 says, We died and our life is hidden in Christ. When we were saved and we came to the saving knowledge of who Jesus is, it means that our old man has died and now we are secure and we are protected and we are covered by Jesus. That means what, no matter what happens around us in the earth, when we view our lives from God's perspective, when we set our minds on things above, we see things differently on the earth. That means there may be so much of chaos that's happening around us, but when we look from the word of God, which says that he has a plan for us. He knows what the plan is in our lives, plans of good and not of evil. We are so encouraged because we know that at the end of it all, there's going to be such a mighty testimony. I believe that as the children of God, when we view our lives from a heavenly perspective, we bring life to the earth. We can breathe life to the earth. We breathe the spirit of God that is inside of us into the earth so that when there are people that are hopeless, where there's uncleanness, where there's sin, where there's corruption, we are able to speak life into the situation and we are able to uh, let people to see how God sees them. Now, when I looked at uh, uh, about what a heavenly perspective is, I am reminded and I went to the book of Isaiah chapter 6 and first one, uh, from verse 1 to verse 8. God gives us a glimpse into the heaven when, he spe when Isaiah sees this vision. And he says and he reads as follows. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. You know, when I, I read that, and I'm going to continue to read it, but when I read those first few verses, I said, Lord, what a 
perspective it is from heaven when the angels are looking down and all they can do is to cry out holy holy is the lord god almighty and if we are seated in heavenly places that should be our declaration and our proclamation so that when we look on the earth we declare holy 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 is the lord god almighty the whole earth is full of his glory and if we start to see it like that we change our perspective we bring back joy we bring back life we bring back hope we bring back the happiness into our home we infuse our homes with the spirit and the breath of god and it changes how we see things when we look in from colossians when when paul is speaking and when he says set your mind on things because the old man has passed away the old man has died that means those things that we had the sin nature of man the 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 way we used to think in the past the way we used to view things in the past it's all gone away because now our new life in christ brings us a new perspective on how we should view our lives and how we should live our lives when we looking when i looked at this passage of scripture it says in in isaiah it says the train of his robe filled the temple and above it stood seraphims who had six wings the bible says that with two he covered his face with two he covered his feet and with the other two it says that he flew he was in an elevated position but his eyes were covered and his feet was covered sometimes with our natural eyes we behold things and it causes us to react to the way we see life in a very different way when we see things that are happening around us people that are dying people that are sick people are unemployed it's all the negative things that we are seeing but god is saying to us look through this through your spiritual eyes look it through the way i am seeing it that in the days to come this pandemic is going to be over people are going to rise up again the church is going to rise up as a mighty army people are going to start to flood in and come in and to serve god and to love him and once again know of how much he cares for them and they will come in glorifying and worshiping him then the other thing he says that he covered his feet we need to cover our movements we need to cover where our feet treads upon because there are sometimes we the bible says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of god but sometimes we allow ourselves to step into things that we do not really that is not really in the plan of god and then we find ourselves in a mess and then the first thing we do is we ask where god are you oh god where are you in this situation god why have you abandoned me but here the angels show us that they cover their face they cover their feet and they are elevated in the presence of god and i pray today that we as his children that as his church as his sons and his daughters that we will lift ourselves they will we will find ourselves in an elevated position in his presence seeing and viewing the earth as god sees it because while we are here we are not crying hope the hopelessness we are not crying despair we are not saying we have we don't know what to do or which side to turn to but we are crying holy 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 is the lord god almighty holy is the lord of hosts the whole earth is filled with his glory so where people are seeing destruction and distress we are seeing the full glory of god upon the earth we are seeing how god is ministering we are not looking at what is happening that's the negative things but we are looking at the positive things we are seeing of how people are recovering we are seeing the testimonies we are hearing of how people's lives have changed we are hearing of how people have, uh, where others have lost their jobs they have still kept their jobs we are still hearing of how people are getting promotions even in this time we need to look at what god is doing on the earth at this time and we need to give him glory the next verse it says the posts of the door were shaken by the voice of him, and the house was filled with smoke in that moment when isaiah saw the vision and he felt the presence of god the first thing he said was woe is me for i am undone i'm a man of unclean lips and i dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts you know at that moment in time when we elevate ourselves in the how 
everything that is unclean in us comes it comes to the fore and when we look at god and we say god how can you use me how can you uh, how can i as a person uh, stand and say holy holy is the lord god almighty when you know my doubts when you know my fears when you know how it, sometimes i'm in distress oh god and god never leaves us nor forsakes us when we find ourselves in that position because he says the angel the seraphim flew to him having a uh, in his hand a life coal and he takes it with the tongues from the altar and he touches his mouth and he says, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sin is purged. God cleanses us. God shows us that it does not matter, no matter how, what we may go through. But when he sees us, he sees us as his sons and daughters on the earth, that the whole earth is groaning and waiting for. And they are waiting for us to arise in this time. So he, he will touch our mouths with a live hot coal. And he will say, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sins are removed. And then the voice of the Lord comes to Isaiah and it says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? When God asks that question, let it be that all of the body of Christ will arise and shout, here am I, send me. I am believing that God is going to use us in a powerful and a mighty way in the days to come. There's not going to be time for us to sit around and to think about what we're going to be doing or how we're going to spend our days. Because God is saying to us that when all of this is done, there's a great work that needs to be accomplished on the earth. And he is looking for his sons and daughters who are crying out, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. That irrespective of what we are going through, there's a praise in our lips. There's a word of, of, of gratitude and thankfulness in our hearts. Does not matter because we know that God is taking care of us. God is still on our, uh, uh, on our side. God is still lifting up us in his arms. Those times when we feel unloved and unwanted, God wraps us up in his arms. And he's saying to us today, I love you. I need you. Whom shall I send? And today we are, as we are listening to this message, wherever you are, I pray that you will stand up and you will say, Lord, send me, here am I. Lord, send me, here am I. I want to be filled with the Holy Ghost power. I want to move in his grace and I want to move in his power and I want to move in the power of his word. Lord, give me the unctioning from above because there's no way right now that I am going to look at my circumstances and be discouraged because I'm not, as I may be on the earth, but I'm in an elevated position with God. And so today I pray that you will lift yourself, your spirit man, lift your spirit man out of where you are at right now and elevate yourself in the presence of God. Cover your eyes from those things which are causing you to, to move away from the presence of God. Cover your feet and say, Lord, I only want to go where you want me to go, Lord. Not step into things and into plans and what I have for myself, but only what you have in store for me. So I pray today that you were blessed with this word, that you were encouraged with this word, that when you go out of this place, wherever you are in your homes, as families, wherever you are, that you will be an encouragement to those people that you come into contact with. That when people come to us with stories of hopelessness and despair and discouragement, that we will be able to speak to them about the glory of God that is filling the earth more than anything else more than what we're seeing around us, but we're seeing the world as God sees it. And when he sees the world, he does not see what is going on in the lives of people, but he sees who is his people. He knows whom he can trust. The Bible always says that the eyes of the Lord roam to and fro, looking for a man or a woman who he can trust with his word and with his assignment. And so today, let us be like Isaiah. Let us Say, Lord, send me. Here am I. I pray today that you will set your mind on things above. That, that as, you, as, the, as the word says that 
as the saying goes, let us be so heavenly minded. Heavenly minded means that we know what's on the heart and on the mind of God. That on this earth, we can be of tremendous good. Let's just bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your precious word that has encouraged us so much, O oh God, that, Father, we need not look around what is, what is happening around us, O oh God, but we see your plan and your purpose for us, Lord. We thank you because your word says that we need to rejoice evermore, that, Lord, we need to pray without ceasing. And today, O oh God, that we need to give thanks in everything. And so as your children, Lord, we stand upon your precious word. We set our minds and our hearts above for your word says that we are seated with you in heavenly places help us oh god to elevate our position oh god and to see this earth oh god as you see it full of your glory and i pray today oh god let the word of praise be on our mouths as it was on the seraphim oh god in the vision of isaiah when he said holy 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 is the lord god almighty the whole earth is full of his glory and so father today we sense your glory on the earth we sense your presence in the earth oh god we sense your presence in our homes lord wherever oh god we are we are watching from tonight lord we believe that your presence is with us and that God you are lifting us up oh God lifting up our spirits causing us to mature and to grow in you so we thank you and we give you praise tonight in Jesus mighty name amen amen God bless you